What's going on, guys? Welcome to another, uh, I don't know, Lapore Report, I guess we'll call it. And uh, this weekend, we did some battle bonding. Battle bonding? Battle bonding. And we got about nine packs in prizes. Um, so lots of funny things happened this weekend. On Saturday, went to a local store, Short Stops, and played in the Battle Bond event. Uh, it was 7 p.m. And I was like, that's really late for an event. But the reason was they had a 2 p.m. PPTQ. And my buddy Billy, a uh, good friend of mine who plays at the local store, ended up winning. No, not winning, but making top four or top eight of the PPTQ. I'm not sure. And um, he opened his prize packs. And I was like, well, you know, because I'm here, you're going to undoubtedly open a Jaisen Bleeding Inferno, obviously, because that's the meme. And uh, I'm like, when you do, you have to sign it and give it to me. And so, you know, after opening the Jaya's Immolating Inferno, he signed it. And it said, to the one and only Inferno of my heart, to Frank Billy. So now I have a signed Jaya's Immolating Inferno in real life to add to my collection of Magic Online Jaya's Immolating Infernos. So we played Battle Bond. Um, we opened no money in our pool. The six packs. So interestingly enough, Battle Bond sealed is six packs, uh, as opposed to your normal like, I don't know, eight, twelve. I don't actually know how many two headed giant packs you'd get in a normal event. I don't. That's not a thing I really, uh, really associate with. Uh, I don't really, I don't really associate with those kind of uh, those kind of those kind of events. Uh, I also need to shave, so I apologize in advance for my lack of shaving. Um, but yeah, so we opened nothing. It was me and and, and Robert. Uh, who is Illusions Donate GG in the chat. Um, you, normally we get six each. That's a good amount. See, that's a good amount. And uh, so instead you get six total, which I thought was super interesting at first because obviously you're getting half as many packs. So how can you build two good decks? And the reason is interestingly enough because all the cards are more relevant. There's less chaff in these sets. Um, in, our, in our pool, like we had maybe two black cards that weren't playable, maybe two blue cards that weren't playable, right? And I wouldn't even say they were unplayable. They just weren't playable in our decks. Um, so all of the cards are more playable. You don't have any like one ones for one or like a one three for four or something. Some, you know, whatever nonsense filler cards that you find in regular sets like Dominaria or, you know, Kaladesh or whatever. Like they took all of that out. These sets are packed with like playable cards. So it's actually pretty easy to build two decks out of six packs, which is pretty impressive. So, we opened nothing. We opened, like, three of the lands, which are, like, four bucks, whatever. Um, three of the lands were our three out of six rares. There's a kid. So, like, we're sitting here, me and Robert, and then there's two kids in front of us. The kid to, uh, to like, my 10 o'clock, we'll say, um, he opens Arena Rector, and he's like, hey, is this good? Yeah, and they were like, yeah, it's one of the most expensive cards in the set. It was, like, 25, 30 bucks at the time. Cool. Guy next to him, his partner, doubling season. And I'm like... All you had to do, all you ha all we had to do was get those packs instead of these. We would have been good to go. So uh, it, it it's funny because you know as I, there's the the ongoing joke on stream of me uh, opening doing f you know about fifty dominaria drafts, hundred and fifty, and literally not opening one Karn, Lyra, or Teferi, and only one History of Benalia. So one of those of those four cards one time out of hundred and fifty packs being opened, which is pretty ludicrous. Um, so, you know, we, I got my prize packs. Didn't didn't open them yet. I figured I'd save them and open them here. Uh, we ended up going 3-1, which is pretty sweet. Uh, our first round opponents had a True Name Nemesis. Um, I know all of our opponents had, like, some some level of money card. Our, our final round opponents, who we lost to, who, the, the guys who went 4-0. And uh, they, they actually had the, the Will and... Will Kenrith and the other, the other one, the two Planeswalkers. I forgot what they were called. Um, but they're partners, so all the partnered cards are in the same pack. So if you open Will and Will Kenrith in one pack, the partner is is in the is in the same pack. And so they had foil versions of those. I'm not actually sure how much those go for, but I can check. Will Kenrith uh, foil is fifty dollars, so that's cool. And uh, the the other one is Rowan Kenrith, and she is also fifty, so a hundred dollars in value right there. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, and then Robert went home today, and he was like, "Hey, I, so he was opening his prize, but that would, last night we went three one. Today we did another event, uh, which is Sunday, and we went uh, two one because there was only three rounds. So we each got two prize packs. He has the four packs, and he hands them to me, and he's like, "Take the two you want." So I took two. He opens one, and he gets like nothing good. He opens the next one, and I'm like, hey, "It's gonna be a arena rector." It was an arena rector. 
Uh, and then he gets home and he, he like figures out he opened a blue white dual land as well, but it was a foil. So, or he opened that yesterday, and I guess that's the one he played, and it was fifty dollars. So Robert got eighty dollars worth of value as well. So you know, I'm hoping that at some point I won't be the only person that didn't get literally nothing out of this. But knowing my Magic Online luck, maybe we'll see. It's just a funny meme at this point. But um, nevertheless, um, went two one today. And uh, let's open these packs and see what happened. Oh, did you play in the second event? I didn't even know you went in the sec. I didn't even know you played in the second event. Either way, still pretty good uh, to fifty dollar value. So anyway, and also the 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 rares are in the front of these packs. So I'm gonna do this, and we're gonna. Hey, that's pretty good. That's a little Mystic Confluence. That's all right. In case you guys don't know what this does, why can you focus? Can you zoom? Can you? Either way, you guys know what Mystic Confluence is. It's pretty sweet. Um, so this was also this card was fantastic. It's called Inner Demon, right? I don't know. Again, it's not going to zoom for some reason. There we go. And Chain of Creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying, uh, and is a demon in addition to its other types. So it's if you put it on a two two, it becomes a four four flyer, and then it says all non demon creatures get negative two negative two until end of turn. So it's basically a fantastic sweeper that gives you a sweet flyer left over. Um, <clears throat> and you know we got the crowd goes wild. It's an assist card. Support X. Each creature gains plus one plus one. Uh, each creature with a plus one plus one counter gains trample. That's interesting. This was played against us, but I didn't know about the trample part. The zoom might not be relevant. Like, it's not... I don't know if it's going to be relevant to... Or, uh, not relevant, but... Um, realistic to to zoom on all these cards. And then we got a, a, a Bold Weir, Intimidator, and... Uh, I guess that's all three of the Uncommons. This guy was also pretty relevant. Making all their, their guys... Ca oh, come on. <laughs> Making all their guys cowards is pretty good. So, Mystic Confluence. Not too bad. Uh, even if it's not worth money, I don't know if it's going to be st st still worth anything because it's been... Uh, you know, seeing printed again, and it's not like a, a an older card. It's not like a legacy or vintage card. It is a commander card, though, so that's pretty sweet. It is one of my favorite counter spells ever printed, so that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll do it again. We got this guy, this guy, and I don't know what this is. This is Zinder Splits Judgment. Actually, I think this was played against us yesterday. This was also in uh, our opponent's winning deck. And it says, uh, for each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend creates a token that's a copy of a creature they control. So they get a second creature of their best creature. And it says, each foe returns a creature they control to its owner's hand. Again, pretty sweet commander card. Um, probably, you know, not worth anything. But nonetheless, like, still pretty good. So what are you guys saying? Uh, Frank, your positivity is amazing. Is that, I don't know if that's true or not, because I was like bemoaning my inability to um to open anything worth money but i am doing it in a i feel like i'm doing it in a, like a jovial kind of way so it's it could go either way uh, i went through open open like 40 bucks in cards altogether that's pretty good uh yeah the, the format was great i really had a good time because there's like so many like i said it's because there's not a lot of chaff in the packs right so you're never like i'll play a two two for two with no abilities this turn all your cards did stuff like if you just look at this pack by itself right we have this card's great um, it's Azra Odds Maker. This is one of my favorite cards. If you guys checked out my Patreon, uh, for the dollar tier, you can check out an article. My my top my favorite Battle Bond cards. Uh, this was one of them. It's a three three for three. It's a warrior. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may discard a card. If you do, choose a creature. Whenever that creature does combat damage to a player this turn, you draw two cards. So I can be like, I'll choose this two two flyer and discard a land. If it if it deals damage, I can I draw two. Um, and that's just an uncommon. Then you have Hunted Wumpus. You have Noxious Dragon. Uh, Hand of Silumgar, again, does something. We have Lightwalker. It has flying as long as it has a plus one, plus one counter on it. We have Midnight Guard. Like, all the cards do stuff. They all There's, like, no vanilla creatures in this format. This card is also pretty good. Uh, both against us and for us. It's a uh, Charging Binox, I believe. And it is a 7-5 with Assist and Trample. So, which assist just means your opponent can... You're not your opponent, but your teammate can help you cast it, which is pretty sweet. All right, you ready? Oh, these guys, and... Foil Shock. Okay, well, that's... 
And a Nixlethid. Nixlethid? Yeah, Nixlethid's not very exciting. And there's the battlefield. Choose an opponent. It gets a negative one, negative one for each card in their hand. We had someone play this against us in the last round today. Um, Plated Crusher. This card... This card is probably more legend, more more mythic than uh, than the rare. Just a seven six hex proof for seven mana with trample. Yeah, this card was busted in. Uh, I forgot what format this was. I think this was Battle for Zendikar, but that card is actually disgusting. And then we have Opportunity and Savage Event Maw as the other cards. But then like you have Last Gasp, which is also great. Last Gas, which is more like it. Negative three, negative three with new art. So that's pretty sweet. Um, this actually, I just contradicted myself and found a vanilla creature. A Raptor Companion, which is a 3-1. And this is the third time this card has been printed in the last, I don't know, six months, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty sad. But yeah, no other no other vanilla cards in this pack. Oh, I lied again. There's a Kraken Hatchling. So these cards would probably go in the non-unplayable pile. But like like I said, there's not many. There's not many unplayable cards in this in this format, it feels like. Like, I like it. It feels like there's a higher concentration of playables. And I feel like they should just do that with sets from now on. Just take all the 1-1. The one, one, like, just make a set. Instead of making it 270 cards or however big they are, just make it 200 cards and take all the junk out. Like, nobody needs 1-2s for 2, you know? Oh, Angelic Chorus. This is a card we opened yesterday as well. And it's hot garbage. It is a 5-man enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. So... Not impressive. I am not impressed. Um, if it was like... See, and, and, and there's two caveats on here which make it pretty bad, right? Like, this is a five-man enchantment that's only gaining you life. It's not It's not advancing your board. It's not helping you survive, except for the life game part. But you have to play creatures after you play this, in which case you already have creatures, right? So my problem is that it doesn't say whenever a creature enters the battlefield under you or a teammate's control. And it also doesn't say whenever a creature enters the battlefield, period. So, like, there's so many ways they could have improved this card to make it a better five mana do nothing enchantment that has no enter the battlefield ability. But I don't know. As it stands, even pretty unimpressive, even for like a uh, a commander card. Like, right? I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even play that in commander just because it only affects you. And one thing to note, like we mentioned, or like I mentioned, I guess, is that all of the all of the par partner cards come in the same pack together. So you have proud mentor. An impetuous protege, and uh, one taps a creature, and so like if me and if me and Robert were playing, and I had a blue white deck, and he had a green red deck, I could put this in my deck, and he could put this in his deck, and when I play this, he could search for this and get it for free. So he basically draws a card, which is pretty sweet. So right now we're looking at uh, only Mystic Confluence as an exciting card. Yeah, and that's what that's what I love about Cube. The Muffin Dragon sets that are super deep almost always seem to be more fun since you can stay open longer. And I think that's also why I love Cube because like you just don't have many dead cards. Um, here's the one fun thing about partner cards is when you open them as a rare, you actually get two rares. And we had this. We also had this in our pool today. Uh, Virtus the Veiled for three mana. Partner with Grom the Great. Death Touch one one. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. And this is Gorm the Great. And I think I called it Grom because Rob has been calling it Grim and Grom all day. Even though he doesn't, he knows the name. He just doesn't know how to say say words. Can you? Can you zoom? All right. Giant Warrior for four, a two, seven. Vigilance. And this is also awkwardly worded. It says Gorm the Great must be blocked if able. And Gorm must be blocked by two or more creatures if able. So, like, we actually had some discussions with opponents. And we were like, does that mean all the creatures have to block him? Or just two or more if able? Two or more. Why or more? It's weird. Anyway. So you get both of these. So we got two rares in this pack. I don't think they're worth anything, but... You know, it's not all about money, guys. I don't know why you guys are so focused on the value of these cards. That's really weird. Let's just open the packs and enjoy the magic cards for what they are. Don't be... Don't be greedy, guys. Also, we opened a, uh, a Fertilid Ground here. A little Mike B, Mike B staple. A little Fertilid Ground. That's pretty cool. It's not, but... Loktar Ogar is correct. Loktar Ogar. Oh, interestingly enough, this pack only has two uncommons. So when you open a partnered rare, and one of them is a Reckless Scholar, when you open a partner rare, uh, apparently it takes the place of one of the uncommons. That is interesting, and I did not know that. Now I know. 
All right, looks like we got four packs left. I'm, I'm feeling low on the Academy Rectors or the... Uh, even... Um, what's the blue card that lets you search for an instant or a sorcery with a two, two or less cost? I guess we'll find out when we open it, right? <laughs> Probably not. I don't know what this is, but it looks terrible. Victory Chimes. Three mana. Untap Victory Chimes during each other player's untap step. A player of your choice adds a colorless. I, so, like, without the or more, you'd have to block with exactly two creatures. That's correct. But I'm thinking, like, uh, at least two creatures makes more sense. Because when it says uh, it has to block with two or more, if, you know, what does it say? Let's look at the wording. Let's look at the exact wording. It says, Gorm the Great must be blocked if able, and Gorm must be blocked by two or more creatures if able. Like, the or more creatures if able almost makes it sound like you have to block with every creature that's able. It's very interesting. Like, you, if you said at least two creatures, that means that's the minimum, right? Two is the minimum. But once you fulfill that minimum, you're good to go. All right, that's not that's not an exciting card. The Chimes. The Chimes is not exciting. What up, J-Loot? Yeah, Spellseeker is gas. That card is really impressive to me. All right, so we got a Beast Token. And we got an Island. And we got a Arcane Artisan. That looks like a Mythic. Uh, three mana for an O3. That's not the mythic we're looking for. Target player draws a card for... Alright, I'll just hold it up and read it from here. Uh, so we have three mana target player... Three mana tap target player draws a card, then exiles a card from their hand. If a creature card is exiled this way, they create a token that's a copy of that card. When artisan leaves the battlefield, exile all, cre cre all tokens created with at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to the end of the next... You get to the end step to keep them. That's pretty neat. Um, also, one of the uh, the bonkers cards, if you guys were playing a, a lot of Masters drafts, you got Dinrova Horror here, your favorite and mine at the uncommon slot. Less oppressive when you're, when you're, oh my god, just zoom, just focus, there we go. Less impressive when you're playing multiplayer format, though, because, like, it's not gonna, it's not backbreaking you if they bounce your best guy and you have to discard a card because you do have a teammate, so. Alright, let's see what else we got. We got one more pack after this, so two packs left. Sower of Temptation. I don't know if that's anything, but still Sower of Temptation is a cool card. And we got some more partners. We got a, a Soul Blade Cor Corrupter and a Soul Blade Renewer. 3 3 and a. That's probably better. If I can not. This is hard to do. 3 3 and a 2 2. All right. When uh, enters the battlefield, support two. I'm oh my god, I can barely read these because of the because the lack of zooming, because of the lack of focusing here. Anyway, uh, have I pulled three wizards? I pulled the sower, and we pulled this arcane artisan. That's a wizard, and that's it. We pulled two wizards and a mystic confluence, which is basically like a wizard, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe we pulled another wizard. You're a wizard, daddy. Am I missing a rare? What did I get here? I got Arcane Artisan, Sower, Mystic Confluence, that's three. Victory Chimes is four. Gorman Verus is five. Zender Splits Judgment is six. Huh. Oh, I seem to have misplaced me rares. I forgot what the other two rares were. We're going to look through this pile to see if we can find them awkwardly find them as we put them in the wrong place i just want to be able to know what we opened so oh here we go oh angelic chorus which i didn't put the rares for obvious reasons and nixithid wow that's funny because the two worst rares were like oh i didn't even i don't even consider these rares um all right last pack so let's see if we can keep our uh 50 draft magic online never open any money streak alive i imagine we will and yeah it tides about tyrant cool <laughs> <laughs> All right, absolutely nothing. Good times, good times. Thank you guys so much for watching. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, the format was, was super fun. If you guys have the chance before um, before it goes away, I guess, or before it's not a thing anymore, I would definitely recommend checking out some Battlebond events. Like, six packs is sweet. It only costs us, like, the first event was, like, 15 each. The second event was 12 each, so they're not even expensive events. And uh, the format's really cool. I, I enjoyed it a ton. And... Um, 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. Like the format's great. Uh, it's a slow format, so we were able to play three color decks, splashing like one one or two cards as the third color, pretty easily. Especially because there's a lot of fixing in green, and there's a lot of fixing in like artifacts and lands, and the lands are rare. But I mean, six packs, you might open one or two, so we opened three, so that's cool. Um, yeah, had had no problems, and there's a lot of a lot of fixing in green that also fixes your opponent's stuff. Like Fertilid makes target player search for a land. Veteran Explorer is in the set, and it's each player searches for two lands and puts them into play. So like, you, if you're able to mitigate the fact that your opponents also get lands, should be fine. Arcane Artisan is five-ish. Well, that's something. That's not nothing, I guess. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoy Battlebond. Definitely let me know what you guys think and uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons.